I got really bad news. I blew up the tranny on the bug, the green bug. I lost third gear. I don't know what's going on. I suspect something to do with the fork. Either it bent or it got loose or I destroyed third gear. <laughs> I hope not. I don't think so. So let me turn the camera around. So the car is no longer parked on this side. It's parked on this side because it's been on this side for the last three months, more or less. Yeah, give or take a week, about three months. So I haven't really driven this car. I've been driving the GTI. So the GTI is really fun. This is 1,800 pounds. The GTI is only 200 pounds, no, 300 pounds more. And But it's got very close to 200 horses. So it's got an LSD, so it's got traction on both the front wheels. Oh my God, that thing is fast. Anyways, <clears throat> it's got a Eurotech transmission, that's why. Anyways, uh, so we're going to be working on the green bug after three months, more or less. And I got to remove the engine, and I got to check uh, cylinder number four. The valve is either going down or something's not quite right. I don't know. I have to investigate that. So I'll be removing the head. So I'm going to have fun with that. And because I just bought a new uh, Tool Harbor Freight torque wrench, I'm going to have to calibrate it because I know that they're not calibrated. They're off by anywhere between uh, one pound to all the way to four or five pounds. So that's what I've learned since I've had, since I buy those things. So I might do a little short calibration video on, on that torque wrench so it looks like I might have wasted my time um, I thought this valve was the seat was going down or something but I think I discovered the problem but I figured I'd still take it apart with the uh, valve remover thingamabob and um, I'm gonna be checking the the seat to see how they look without the valves but I don't I don't think there's anything wrong I, I, I thought I was dropping the seat on the intake on this one but I discovered that the rockers were doing this shit. When they move to one side, it tightens up. When it moves to one side, to the other side, it loosens up. Motherfucker. Anyways, I'm still gonna do this and, uh, you know, see what's going on on the seat. Okay, I'm just removing the carbon. She looks a lot better now. So. The bottom's not bad, so I'm gonna leave it just like that one. It's not too bad. So I'm gonna check the, see if they're sealing. I think they are, but you never know. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. This one doesn't need any carbon removed. For some strange reason, this valve does not acquire any carbon buildup, probably because of the fuel. I'm gonna colorize this stuff and do a uh, spin and then spin it because I wanna see where it's touching. Yeah, we just lapped it with the uh, grinding compound anyways and all the blue thing color came off so I have good news and bad news good news is it's perfectly uh, sealing but this thing does not have a three angle valve job it's just one angle going up that's it <sighs> it's alright whatever I can live with it so I'm gonna continue checking. Well, I already did that one and did this one and they're both perfect. Uh, I haven't done this one or that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do those. I don't expect any problems. She's back together. I could not find anything wrong with the valves or the seats. So that just does confirm that the rockers are just dancing like this sideways like that. All right, so I'm not gonna worry too much about it. Uh, I'm gonna figure out a way to get them to stop dancing. She's back together. Um, I think it's the rockers. Uh, I might get aftermarket rockers. So for now, eh, whatever. Transmission's out. She's out. Okay, so I'm gonna remove the the dry shafts for axle shafts. I don't have the pullers for that, so the easy way is to. Put the nut back on here, the very end, so you don't damage your threads. And then, put it against 
<laughs> okay, this is what I'm using. I'm using this this wall or foundation, and then I'm gonna whack it right here. So this is the other side. So put a piece of wood here just to keep it kind of level so that I whack it here. Obviously I wasn't gonna use the concrete, but well, last time I did. Okay, last time I did do it that way, but not this time. This time, I'm just gonna whack it right here. It's coming. Done. Use a wedge called a screwdriver. Okay, so pay attention how this goes, how you got it out. I don't think it matters on this, but there are items in here that go like that. And then this, there we go. Okay, it's got a, a inner nice and uh, round edge that goes towards the transmission and now That is it now we remove the c-clip That's in there. Oh Boy c-clip. Oh, there it is There's the c-clip right one little ear. And that's the other little ear Without if you don't take that out This shaft will never come out all right, so as you can see, here's the C-clip that we got out. Actually, there's a washer in there that I have to take out first. So basically, they go like this. Okay, it keeps that washer in, but this is going to come out. That's it. So we're going to do the same thing to the other side. So I got it on my little table because working on the ground, it's back breaking and knee breaking. It's just painful. Too painful for this old man. So... It's up here now. Now I can work on it really easy. Yay! So we are removing the nose cone and this this uh, cover and this cover and the whole ring and the bearings that go on the sides will come out and then we can work on the inside. Okay, I got these out. That's all there's to it. This is where the carrier bearing sits that big ass carrier bearing and you can see the differential right there the the ring for the pinion so i'm not seeing anything wrong with this like the bearings are good this bearing is good um they're not loose they're perfectly tight both of them no broken anything just it's just okay um uh, everything's good over here, opinion, you know, it's looking good. All right, so I'm gonna separate this thing from here so that I can take the whole shaft, which includes this shaft, out, and then we can split the case. So I went ahead and separated this shaft, which is this shaft. Okay, separated it from this shaft. That just screws on to that little screw right there, okay. You know, it just goes in, you turn it, okay, okay, right there it's tight, okay, like it, it stopped turning. You don't want it that, you want it loose because expansion, like right there, and that's where you would push it back in, you know, back in there, and then put the C-clip so it doesn't back out. By the way, this is your reverse. Well, good news is that the C-clips that go here, this C-clip, and this C-clip are perfectly on. I was thinking that maybe one of these C-clips popped off. You know, they probably, poof, popped off. The shaft moved further away so the third gear couldn't go in. But it looks like everything's perfectly perfect. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. We're not going to remove the lock for this bearing, which is that guy right there. Um, we're just going to pull the whole thing, this thing hole up and hopefully we will be able to adjust third gear and then put everything back. Got my bolts out. One, and this one's also catching. Okay, let me take those off and then we can push that up. Turns out I have a dilemma. Um, 
I don't have a scissor jack handy right now. The only scissor jack uh, car that I have is the Kia uh, Spectra, but uh, that one's, well, my son went to work, so I have no scissor jacks. I tried using that guy, this blue guy. It goes in, but it goes in crooked because of this. Because of this, and it's just hitting the pinion at an angle. And I'm like, nah, I'm gonna break the pinion. So I decided I'm gonna wait till tomorrow. So I'm gonna call it a day. Six and a half hours later. I found the problem. It turns out, where was it? It's somewhere around here. Uh, it might be on the other side. I don't, I don't, I already put it together. I don't know what the fuck is what, but, um, Somewhere around here, there's an adjustment for the fork. And I could tell that the fork actually moved from the shaft that can, that's being controlled by this. So it moved about four millimeters away from third gear. So that was an easy fix. And when I went to loosen it up, it did not feel uh, tight. It felt snuggy, wuggy, kind of tighty, but still snug. Yeah, it felt like that. So that was my bad 200,000 miles ago. <laughs> I was afraid I was going to break it, you know, and this time I just like, fuck this, I'm just going to tighten it up. So I went ahead and tightened it up real good. 36 inch pound, I mean, foot pounds. I already calibrated this thing. It's from Tool Harbor Freight. They're not calibrated, okay? I'll tell you that much. They're not calibrated. So I would recommend if you buy a Tool Harbor Freight torque wrench, calibrate it. I think I'll make a video of that, maybe. Okay, that's it. All four of them are torqued. Now I can proceed with the assembly for the shaft. The shaft that goes from this to the clutch housing over here. And then we can proceed to put that, the ring gear. Technically the transmission is done, uh, torqued. I believe they torqued to 22 pounds. These side, clay, side plates and these right here they will torque to 14 pounds. So everything's done. She is good to go. There we go. She's a beaut. So now I just have to uh, put all this crap on the axle tubes. And uh, I've got my new shims right here. Well, that one's an old one that I had to remove because I put one in. Too many and it was too loose so I had to take it off but uh, it was still good so I just threw it in the, the pack of yeah I used the uh, gray over here and I used the uh, orange uh, silicone okay so we shouldn't have any leaks in theory unlike this guy the tubes are on um all the Things, all those things are snug. They're not tight because they're going to be twisting. That shit's going to be twisting. So I need it to be able to twist. So it's going back on the car. Finally, it's in. Everything's been torqued. Those nuts been torqued. The brakes have been bled. So everything's connected. Everything's connected. The clutch cable is connected. Those boots are nice and good and tight. And... The connection to the to the uh, linkage from there to the little uh, square thing is all connected now. And I did check all the gears, make sure they went in when it was out. I, you know, manually checked every single gear. So I have all gears, including reverse. Perfect. All right. This was the project for this week. I uh, was able to repair this transmission in, uh, on this weekend, Saturday and Sunday. I didn't do it all day because I have a life. So after I finish having a life, I sacrifice myself doing this mechanical stuff. So um, till next week, we will put the Porsche motor back on. I need to get some lash caps. I thought it was a valve that was going down. It wasn't a valve that's going down. I thought the seat was fucked up. You know, I'm losing my seat on the intake. Turns out it needs a lash cap. 
it's a lash cap. It needs a lash cap because what's happening, the rocker, it's making a little dimple on the stem. And basically when it's in the dimple, it, it's it's the rocker is loose, you know, perfectly. But when the valve spins, that dimple moves to a different location and it tightens up. And if I let's just say if I if I calibrate it right there, what will happen is uh, I will hear like I will have a nasty clickety clack when the valve gets to the same place where it's really, you know, uh, where the dimple meets the the uh, rocker again, and it uh, basically makes a lot of clickety clack. So that's my whole deal. Lash caps that'll fix it. So I ordered some from CB. So because I couldn't find mine, I have a set. I've been looking for them and I, I can't find them, so I'm just gonna order another one. Screw it. Many months later. Finally found my lash caps. They were underneath this, all this junk right there, hanging right there. Anyways, found them and uh, basically installed them already, took some of those and put them on. So I should not have any problem with my head anymore. Uh, with my valves tightening up and loosening up and the, all that bullshit. So problem solved so now we just put this engine on the car we're gonna fill the transmission with oil now this is a can of worms that i'm not gonna go into all i'm gonna say is worked for me so here's my explanation so i use a quart of lucas transmission or it's also for the engine but you use it for differentials and transmissions and yada 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 so i use a quart of this lucas and then I use a quart of just super tech, you know, differential gear, transmission, whatever. You know, this is a 75-140. Um, <clears throat> that's it. That's all I use. And I beat it like I stole it. And wear is very minimal, if any, really. Um, transmission, last time I had opened it up was 200,000 miles ago. And it's like I didn't drive it, you know. Like the interior is just pristine. So I am a firm believer, a quart of Lucas in the transmission with a quart of full synthetic and you're good, man. You're good. Yeah, so that's how I do it. I just insert it, put a little hose on the end of the can or quart of Lucas and then just squish it. It takes forever because it's very thick. It's like honey. So yeah, just thought I'd show you my pain. Well. As you can see, I had a couple of blowouts. So yeah, it's kind of like that with Lucas. It's just the way it is. Just poof, ah, fuck. So I made a mess back down there, but I have some rags, so. All right, so I'm gonna have to clean that up a little bit. I said a little bit because it is rust inhibitor. So, you know, it's protecting your, your very old and uh, <laughs> rusty investment, so. That's rust inhibitor. I'm just gonna leave that shit like that. Anyway, so I'm gonna continue adding this guy because uh, cause I'm done with that one. Whoo, that was hard. Success. She's in. It actually, on the first, no, second try, like I just had to spin the flywheel because I already know the pattern on this thing. And uh, basically, it went right in. She's almost done. It looks done from here, you know, just filters and that's it. But I still have to turn it on. Meter, use the meter thing to make sure my carburetors are synced. Uh, I can do it by ear, but this is still better. Anyways, and I need all my exhaust. It's still miss missing. So it's all done. Okay, I topped it with oil. We got our messed up uh, wrap <laughs> on the exhaust because it bottomed out and it fucked it up. I hit a bump and it, it was one of those speed bumps. And uh, it, the speed bump was kind of high. And... <laughs> fucked it all up anyways exhaust is on my AFR connection is connected so we're just gonna disable disabling the trigger for the CB black box because I just want to crank it to get the pressure um, circulating before it actually starts I always do this I always prime it so that's what we're going to be doing. It's priming. So we will be cranking and cranking until we get oil pressure. Okay, fire in the hole. Well, no, no fire in the hole. But definitely we're going to be cranking. So uh, I still haven't put the wheels on. I just want to crank it. That's all. Oil pressure. We're looking for oil pressure.
One eternity later. There we go. We got oil pressure. My light went out over here also. We are at 25 pounds. We're good. Okay. We're going to let the starter cool down. Um, and then we'll start it up again. Okay, we just checked the engine bay. Looking for oil sprays. <laughs> or, you know, looking for bad shit. Everything looks good. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, fire in the hole. Now it should start in theory. Yeah, she almost started. Purrs like a kitten. Yeah. Purrs like a kitten. Just over five. Just under five, but let's see this back one. Yeah, under. Let's see this one over here. Just over five. So this means that this one's breathing more than this side. So we'll go ahead and do this. Just to bring it up. Right there. Yeah, that's about right. Yep. Okay, they're synced. Okay, we're driving. All the gears go in. So that's good. Okay, I'm not used to the clutch no more. I'm used to the GTI. My shifter feels weird. Third gear! Ah! I got third gear again! Yay! Okay, no shimmy. It's... Oh my god, the clutch is... Butter smooth. Unlike the Kennedys, they're all friggin' chugga 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 chugga, you know, shimmy like up the wazoo. Third gear. Let me throw it forward. Oh yeah, fourth gear. Back to third. Perfect. No grinds, no nothing. I like it. Okay, we're gonna get new drums. My drums are warped. I can tell the, it's, the warping is happening. I forgot this is not a truck. I put it in second gear because that's usually fourth gear what I use for a semi truck. Oh my God, it drives like a dream. Oh, I miss this car so much. I miss it. She's a shifting. Uh, I can smell uh, oils, burnt oils from the exhaust. Cause me being greasy. Okay, I need gas. She's empty. Okay. I remember what I did. I stole it from the bug and put it in the GTI because <laughs> I knew that this kind of, this thing wasn't going to be running for many, many weeks. It turned out to be almost three months since I screwed up the third gear. Oh, look at that. Third gear went in like nothing. And before, I remember, I was grinding like, what the hell is wrong with me? Well, that was the, the, uh, the shift fork actually going away from third gear. But I, you know, it happened so slow that I didn't think that it was that, you know. I thought it was just me being a bad shifter. Until I was hot dogging it and I shift so hard that I I missed third gear. I hit it like between second and third and it it didn't like that. Oh, look at that. Oh my God. Down shifting, perfectly smooth. Oh yeah. Back to second. Woo. I am livid. I am so happy. My bug is alive. The buggy is alive. 
there's moments in your life when you're like very content because of what you've done because you didn't pay you know fifteen hundred dollars up the ass to a mechanic you know and you did it yourself oh my god that is undescribable that is like whoo my god i did that so this is the second time i've opened this the transmission and actually went in there did a heart surgery i'm sorry i didn't show you because it, I, it, my views for transmissions don't get a lot of views so i figured there's plenty of youtube videos on how to work on these transmissions man it purrs like a kitten yeah i'm running a little rich but uh usually when it warms up it leans out i i, I don't eh. You know whatever ids what do you want um but everything's functional engine is very very smooth all right this is pretty much the video adios muchachos adios muchachos and remember base boom bottom when you can okay so i'm pretty sure this torque wrench which is from tool harbor freight probably is not calibrated correctly and I want to know if this thing is calibrated correctly because I'm going to be taking the head off again on that side there right there uh, I think I might have a seat that's going down so instead of having a major disaster we are going to take it to the machine shop and have those seats replaced on the intakes anyways so I was just checking this thing with a calibration tool that thing right there and we're gonna basically set this thing to 25 since 25 seems to be the 25 foot pounds seems to be the number that we use more commonly for the heads so that's what i'm gonna you know calibrate it at so i'm gonna calibrate that uh, i need both hands for that so i'm gonna pause okay and as you can see we are set to 25 pounds foot pounds so we're gonna see how this works i'm gonna use my press since i know those things are probably tight to like 70 pounds so i'm gonna go ahead and um put that on there Your funky shit. okay okay here we go okay 21 needs a little bit more of an adjustment so all there's to this is really i don't want to mar the the handle so rag vice grips these vice grips i've had since i was 15. these were my dad's yeah but they were confiscated by me for my bicycles and shit loosen this okay make sure that the you know it's at zero when you take this off and all you do is just spin it clockworks and it will tighten up and then you test it and then you do it again and you do it again and you do it again until you get your exact number this is i'm calibrating for 25 because the average pounds for the heads are is 25 and basically i just you know i i don't use this for high torque stuff you know like uh like a uh, water cool uh uh head studs you know i don't torque you know i don't i just don't do water cooled air cooled it's all air cooled so i'm gonna calibrate this down low perfectly okay reset okay here we go <laughs> 24 point nine it's close enough to go more so it's calibrated now went ahead and uh, redid it to uh uh, 23 because I I never use uh what do you call it? I reset. I never use 25. I always go 23. Okay, well that was like 22. Let's do that again. Almost. I know what happened. This thing slipped. There we go. Has to be in the center. At least that's how I've been calibrated.
pretty close to 23. I'm going to leave it there. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is how you calibrate a torque wrench.